guys and welcome back to the Krull Wall from the Singapore Grand Prix. And the eagle-eyed amongst you would realise that this hat has been used before. Oh no! Yeah, it turns out this is actually a traditional Singapore hat. I wore it as a rich bloke in Monaco. Who knew? Anyway, of course the Singapore Grand Prix itself wasn't as exciting as my hats. It was a slightly long and drawn out race really. Um, two hours couldn't have come soon enough, especially at the front. The 61 laps eventually got completed. Um, there were some good battles and some good intermingles mid-pack towards the tail of the field. A couple of chaotic drives as well. Um, but for the most part, and for the championship battle, it's really kind of drawn it out a bit now. And the inevitable will happen. Hamilton's going to be champion this year. So, yeah, that's it now. Vettel seems to have really just given up a little bit, doesn't he? So anyway, before we start as well, new shirt. This was purchased before the uh, announcement that Leclerc was going to Ferrari and... Obviously, Raikkonen was going to Sauber. So, uh, yeah, I expect this to go up in value now. And I might actually get some fucking money for it. <laughs> 75 quid this cost me, but honest to God, it's worth it. So, go in the F1 store and get loads of merchandise off there if you want, because some really good stuff. Not that we've been promoted by him, because the F1 hates us. Anyway, to kick things off, we're going to start off with the race winner, Lewis Hamilton. And what can be said there? He qualified on pole. That pole that came from nowhere, it was really good. Now, a lot of people have said it's the best in his career and it's the best they've ever seen around Singapore. But the last few years, there's been like six tenths gap between uh, pole and the next car. So, not quite sure why three tenths was as legendary as the say. Um, but nonetheless, it was a very good lap and it, it really just asserted himself as he was going to be on pole. You just knew that. And in the race, drove absolutely stunningly. Never had any threat from behind, really, from Vettel. There's a bit of a late uh, sort of mid-pack duel where, um, of course, Verstappen caught up a result of uh, backmarkers having their own little tussle and getting in the way, so to speak, uh, which could have caused problems, but Hamilton held his own this weekend, and you can't really blame him. He qualified pole and he won the race at a circuit that's not been strong for Mercedes for quite a while, and there's nothing else I can do other than give him a full 10 points. I think that was a stunning drive. Next up is Max Verstappen. He, he impressed me a lot more than Hamilton did because Verstappen hasn't really got the car to win. It must be said. You know, the Red Bull's good. It's the fir third fastest car. Did anyone expect that Red Bull to qualify second and only be three tenths behind a Mercedes? I don't think so. I don't think anyone did. It was more than a match for his teammate as well this weekend. Ricardo didn't really turn up. Was a lonely sixth all race, weekend long. Um, but for Verstappen, he stuck it to... For telling the race as well, stuck it to him in qualifying, like I said, nabbing him for P2. And in the race, he got outraced by him at the start, then the safety car came out. And then after that, the Red Bull guys did another brilliant pit stop strategy. We've seen this a lot this year with Red Bull, brilliant pit stop strategy, and it meant that he jumped him again. So a great, great race for Verstappen, and he's going to have to be another full 10 points because that was a brilliant race. That was a great race. In fact, Slightly more impressive than Hamilton, just because of the equipment it was in. Next up is Sebastian Vettel. He's given up. I'm just going to say that now. He's given up. He's 40 points behind now. We've got, what have we got left? Five, six races left after this? 40 points is a lot. It's going to take a retirement and then some now for Hamilton to lose this championship. Funnier things have happened in Formula 1, and everyone says it's unpredictable, but it's not realistically going to happen now. A circuit where Ferrari should have been strong just didn't turn up and didn't show their A game. Silly pit stop strategy as well, and a silly strategy in qualifying, and that was that. So, Vettel, you didn't impress. Ferrari, you didn't impress either, but Vettel, for uh, six points, five, five points. I can't even give you six, because it wasn't even uh, slightly above average. It was just an average race. Nothing else. Next up, we have Valtteri Bottas. Um, Mercedes number two, of course. And, yeah, he's just farting around now, just getting points for Mercedes, isn't he? Not getting involved in anyone else's race. He's just racing on his own. Uh, he kept Raikkonen behind him and kept Ricciardo behind him towards the end. So that's something, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, he stayed fourth all weekend. <laughs> that was that. I'll give him six points. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Next up was Kimi Raikkonen. Um, balls his lap up in qualifying, not surprisingly. Um, we didn't really expect the Monza momentum to carry on. I certainly didn't anyway, especially after the news that he was going back to Sauber, which I'm actually secretly pleased with. Um, I think it's nice that a driver 
you know, ends his championship and ends his Formula One career, whether the team he started with, it's quite nice. But for Raikkonen, it's a bit of a setback. I, you've got to admit, he's he's not really showing his true colours. But then again, when does he ever do? Uh, but for this race weekend, yeah, he just had a bit of a knock, bless him. So for that reason, yeah, he did okay. Uh, yeah, six points probably for him as well. I think he did better than Vettel just because Vettel, Vettel's just been a bottle job all season. Doesn't deserve points now. And then Ricardo in P6. Again, not really a match for his teammate all race long. Did decidedly averagely. So for that reason, Ricardo can have five. It wasn't a brilliant race by him. Average at best. Then we come to Fernando Alonso, which a great, great race by Alonso. 7th place, fastest of the B teams, but was he the fastest? No, it was a brilliant strategy by McLaren to get in there. A lot of cars got stuck behind Sorokin after pitting early because Sorokin had the early pit stop and they got bottled up behind him and that was that. And Alonso managed to get a pit stop and come out ahead of all those. He came out ahead of both Assers, both um, Toro Rossos. There was a Force India back there as well, of course. Mm, we'll come to him later. Uh, Renault's as well I think got caught up in it slightly so he did benefit a lot by it Alonso and for him to finish seventh is good it's a confidence boost for, for McLaren and they did a good strategy this weekend and Alonso did drive well so for that reason Alonso I'm going to score you eight points I think it was a good race um, but of course helped by your team as well so without that I think he'd have probably got about tenth Next up is Carlos Sainz bagging P8 after qualifying P12, so he was out in Q2, but outraced his teammate in the race, which is what counts more. And yeah, drove solidly, fair enough, did a good race. And yeah, what can we say? It was a good, good race, didn't really see much of the Renaults this weekend, it must be said. But to bring home four points, qualifying 12, finishing 8th, it's an okay race, outrace your teammate as well. And yeah, a good a good pickup by Science, who of course will be going to Alonso's seat next year. So good stuff. So I'm going to score him seven points. I think it was an okay race. The the Renault looked to be a bit faster than what they were and what they ended up being in the race. So I think they wanted more from this weekend, but it wasn't to be. Then in P9, we have Charles Leclerc scoring for the first time in five races, would you believe, which is surprising. And this weekend, it didn't look like they were going to be scoring points. They were around 13th, 14th, somewhere like that. And then that's where they qualified. And then in the race, again, they did the McLaren strategy, which was keep them out as long as possible on the tyres. And uh, yeah, they didn't have to then fall back behind uh, Sorokin and all that gaggle. Of course, it's worth noting that the main reason why you know, Grosjean and people like that ended up getting stuck behind Sorokin was because they had to pit earlier because they were on the hypersofts, obviously. And some of these cars that got out, knocked out in Q2, chose to go on ultras. So that really helped them out. Um, but nonetheless, a great strategy by Sauber to bag P9 and two points on the board for them. Um, yeah, a good race. And nice to see Leclerc get a couple of points as well, especially after, like we said, getting signed for Ferrari next year. Uh, had that little tup in uh, at free practice one, but it's his first ever time at the circuit, so you can't really blame him. So for that reason, Mark, uh, sorry, Charles Leclerc, I'm going to score you nine points. I think that was a good race, nine points. And then we come to the final point scoring, Nico Hulkenberg, qualified 10th, finished 10th. Pretty average race, really. Um, yeah, he, he got outraced by science in the end. And what can be said, he just had a lonely race he picked up a point which is okay but Hulkenberg I just always expect that little bit more from him um so for that reason it's going to be middle of the road five it wasn't a stunning race by him but did well to pick up a point if he didn't get a point I'd give him about a three next up then we have of course Marcus Ericsson just missing out on the points um was pretty matched evenly with his teammate throughout the weekend qualifying behind each other finishing in practice sessions behind each other as well and in the race, he benefited, of course, from all this gaggle that got stuck behind Sorokin as well. He did look at one stage that he was going to be catching Hulkenberg and nabbing that final point. I think he got it down to about four and a half seconds, and then his tyres went off, and Hulkenberg's were more durable. So he ended up staying around 11th and then finished about 11 seconds behind him. 20 seconds behind his teammate, so not too bad. A shame not to score a point. It'd have been nice to see a double Sauber points finish again for the second time this year, but wasn't to be. So, Marcus Ericsson, I'm going to score you eight points because I think it was a decent race by you. A fair play, fair game, um, but just not quite as good as Leclerc. Ericsson's driving strongly now and his seat's under threat as well, so we'll wait and see what happens there. 
And then we come to Stoffel Van Dorn. Again, McLaren kept him out there. It worked out, but Van Dorn's not as quick as Alonso, so points weren't still on the card. But a good race, really, by Van Dorn. Nice to see him getting in the mix with things as well, getting involved in a bit of a battle, not lingering around at the back. And yeah, he didn't really make the best of it. I think points could have been potentially on the card for both McLarens today, had Van Dorn had the pace, but he's going to be dejected. He's getting thrown out of McLaren at the end of the year, and potentially no seat in Formula 1 again. So, Van Dorn, yeah, from being McLaren's young, up-and-coming hero, to being binned off and Lando Norris is going to be there now. Must be disheartening for him, but he drove an okay race, and for that reason, I'm going to score him five points. Next up, we have Pierre Gasly. Going to Q2, which was a decent effort by him, especially with the Toro Rosso engine. Of course, Honda powered. Not that great, is it? But, yeah, all in all, he did a good race. Um, he battled with his teammate as well for a bit, so it's worth noting out he had a good, uh, good race as well. And then 13th was the best he could do. He ended up sort of like ahead of that little gaggle that were battling with the Williams. Um, so yeah, did okay in that sense. And yeah, Gasly did okay, really. Just, yeah, he did better than his teammate, out-qualified, out-raced again. Of course, he's going to Red Bull as well next year now, so that's always a boost for him. And yeah, he got the most out of the car that he could, but it just wasn't enough. I don't think points were ever possible, and he didn't get any, so there we go. So for that reason, Pierre Gasly, I'm going to score him seven. I think that's fair enough. Seven points for Gasly. Then we come to Lance Stroll. A pretty quiet race in comparison to his teammate. His teammate were in the thick of it, and Stroll wasn't. Uh, what can we say about him, really? He did okay. He was average. I mean, the qualifier stone dead last. That's obviously the car's fault, not their fault. Stroll, of course, finished ahead of Sorokin, but that doesn't tell the true picture this weekend. I feel that Sorokin had a better race pace and better, just a better race overall, just getting stuck in a bit more. But Stroll did an okay race, and for that reason, I'm going to score him... Uh, I've not scored him any points since Spain, so... Four points. Oh, God... God, what's happening to me? I'm getting all flustered and everything now I've done that. <laughs> oh, shit. There's someone that's getting a lot more punished than Stroll this weekend, let me tell you. Next up, we have Roman Grosjean. And he was the one that got caught up in that gaggle, stuck behind Sorokin, and lost a lot of points. He was running around in eighth before the pit stops. And then that was that. So, yeah, getting stuck behind Williams, it's difficult to say, well, why did you, you know? But we have seen it before at this circuit where you can just get stuck and you're so much faster but you just can't get round them. So Grosjean's race was ruined partly by strategy and, you know, I think he didn't want to stick it in the wall or anything, of course he didn't. But it was a weekend of what could have been for us this weekend. Uh, Magnussen just didn't really get it together at all and Grosjean had chance for points but then the strategy just didn't quite play out. So Grosjean, an okay race, an okay race weekend. Points went begging, and for Haas, that's such a shame because they've been in such good form recently. But, you know, that's racing. So I'm going to score Grosjean six points. Then, after Roman Grosjean, we come to the Force India driver of Sergio Perez. Everyone take a seat because there's a rank coming. Not only did he hit his teammate again and take him out of the race... He apologised on the radio, fair enough, but for fuck's sake, you knew he were there, you knew Ocon was there, and I don't know why you tried opening up your steering like you did to drive him into the wall, he's your teammate. In my own head, I thought maybe something like this could potentially happen again, because they've been showing competitiveness and racing together again the last couple of races, in the points as well, but I didn't expect it like that, he just got stuffed into the wall and that was that, wasn't it? So yeah. My number one rule is don't take out your teammate, and that's everyone's number one rule. The number two rule is then you don't continue to drive like a twat. He was stuck behind Sorokin and couldn't get around him. Sorokin was playing a blinder of defensive driving. He was absolutely on point. Fair play to Sorokin. And then this halfway got alongside him and decided we're going to turn left hard into him and made contact with him, ruining his own race and I think it damaged Rockin's car as well. And Perez, that was a deliberate act of contact. You swerved left. You can't say you didn't know he was there. You can't say that, oh, I thought I'd already got a car's width ahead of me because you knew he was alongside you and that's why you swerved. And that's a deliberate act of contact and that does not go down with me whatsoever. I do not like it. I don't like to see it. It was fucking stupid. 
It, it, it just, it was needless, absolutely needless. You cost yourself points and you cost your entire team points this weekend by taking Ocon out. And what do points make? Prizes. And what have you done? Cost them the points. So if you get the seat now over Ocon at Force India, why has that ever been fair? I'd sooner have Stroll and Ocon in that car now than Ocon and Perez, because Perez, you've thrown yourself out of the championship. You were like it last year and you like it now. You've proved that you can't change. As soon as you get a bit of competition from your teammate, you can't handle it. And as soon as your race doesn't start going your way, you drive into another car on purpose. So for that reason, it's minus 50,000. I've had enough of it. He's driving like an absolute twat. Then we come to Brendan Hartley. Um, yeah, what can we say about Brendan? He had a good race. Um, did okay. Fair enough. You know, he wasn't on point with his teammate. He was out in Q1, qualifying 17th. Uh, and then in the race, he got in the mix a little bit. He had a good race here and there. He got pushed wide by Sorokin and, you know, bits and pieces like that. I think he was one of a numerous amount of drivers as well to get the five second penalties. Just for record, I'm not even counting them. I don't even care about the five second penalties, I've got to be honest, because I think half of them was bullshit. The leaders were coming through on half of them while they were still battling. They're battling for position and it could turn into potential points. So get over yourself, you know what I mean? Lewis Hamilton, you're a four-time world champion, about to be five-time world champion. If you can't drive round a Williams, then something's wrong, isn't it? Same with Vettel, same with Verstappen, you know, so stop whinging. Them five second penalties were all bullshit in my eyes. And there you go. But anyway, Hartley, I think, got one and countless others, so it doesn't even matter anyway. Uh, but yeah, Hartley did a good race, did a did an okay race. It was better. We've seen a bit of improvement from him, a bit of racing style at once. And uh, yeah, Hartley, I'm going to score him... Six points. I think he deserves a six. There's a lot of sixes going about this weekend, but some did go okay. Then we come to Kevin Magnussen. As we said, not really on point all weekend. Uh, was really bad in qualifying. Struggled with grip and struggled to get the car on balance and how he wanted it. And then struggled in the race. I don't think he ever got into the points, but there you go. So Magnussen, I'm going to score him three points this weekend. It was, uh, was a bit of a poor race. And then we come to Sergei Sorokin, and for me, I'm just going to do this now. He deserves a full 10 points because that was a stunning effort. It was absolutely brilliant. The way he was defending against all those cars behind him, mainly Perez, he drove really well. And then when the contact happened with Perez, I'm pretty sure it broke something because straight away, straight after that incident, the lap after, he got overtook by Hulkenberg and overtook by another one as well. Um, so, yeah. Sorokin, for me, was the driver of the day, potentially. I think he drove a really good race. He pitted early because he got a bit of Ocon's car stuck on him. Um, and he was never going to make the tyres last. We knew he wasn't, but it was just nice to see him racing. And it was nice to see a Williams being a bit competitive and, you know, fighting for a position. It was great to see. And Sorokin did a solid, solid job. And his result does not prove what he was capable of this weekend. And... Had he not had the contact with Perez, it'd have probably slipped down to near enough the back anyway, but I don't think it'd have been stone dead last. So that's just my personal opinion. And then Ocon, I can't really talk about him. It was out qualified by his teammate, but then he was shoved into the wall by him. So it's a middle of the road, five points for any retirement, as you know. So now it's that time again. It's time to go grab Jolian. So let me just go get him. He's going to award Palmer of the Week. <laughs> Can you guess it's at Oof or? <laughs> I certainly can't. Jolian! Jolian! It's that time again, Jolian. Here he is, everyone. It's Jolian Palmer for Palmer of the Week. And that was Jolian Palmer, and he is awarded Palmer of the Week to... Oh! Sergio Perez. <laughs> What a surprise. So, that was the Cruel Wall from the Singapore Grand Prix. As always, let me know your thoughts and feedback down below. Did I get any too high, any too low? Did I get it completely wrong with Perez? Was he the innocent victim in it all? Let me know your thoughts and feedback down below. I'll reply to as many as I can. So, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and much love.